but I think it's actually already been picking everything up. I'm, I'm not totally sure, so hopefully. Yeah, okay. All right. So I think what it does is once I click that go live button in the uh, in the thing, then it starts working. But anyways, what's up, everybody? Surya, how's it going? Great to uh, have you on. So it says you were waiting for three hours. Well, I'm so glad uh, you waited and stayed on. Amelia, what's up? Fadi, oh, awesome. Well, I'm excited to do these problems. This is a new test, and I'm excited for it. What's up, Logan? So this is, of course, we're prepping everybody for this PSAT. I know a lot of people told me they're taking it start uh, starting tomorrow, so I want to get these two streams in before then. And I, I've heard some, what's up, Louise? I've heard some other people are taking this <coughs> even this weekend. So I don't know. The world is in, a, it's a crazy time. I don't know what's happening. Uh, I, I think a lot of my students in Los Angeles aren't even taking the PSAT right now. Maybe it's going to be delayed till January. And there's a lot of things up in the air. So we'll see. It is what it is. But for those of you who are taking it, I want to get these out. Lucas, what's up? Coop, what's up? Uh, Louise, uh, Abdullah, what's up? What's up? Um, I can't pronounce. I'm not sure how to pronounce your first name, but it's Brodericks. What's up, Brodericks? Uh, Muhammad, what's up? Oh, you still got your results. That's weird because a lot of my students have already gotten those results. Uh, squigglies, if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, all right. Let's do this thing, people. We've got the timer set to 45 minutes. So it's 45 minutes for the no calculator section for the PSAT. Of course, normal SATs is 55 minutes. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm taking this test for the first time in real time so that you can watch me pivot, adjust, think on my feet, and then, of course, model those same tactics and strategies when you take the test yourself. All right. Hurricane, that's why we're doing these streams, so you can feel ready, and I get that, but the best key to that, uh, the, the, the best solution to that is practice, 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 but don't forget, it's a PSAT, it's not the real SAT, so this is for you to improve and hone your skills. Jack, what's up? All right, people, we, yeah, I'm reading the chat right now, but now I'm about to switch into test mode, because I got to stay focused and in the zone. Here we go, we're going to start in three, what's up, Mirage, Maharsh, Maharsh, what's up, Maharsh? All right, we're going to start in three, two, one. Let's do it. All right. A high school counselor conducted a survey of 16 consecutive quarters to determine the number of students with part-time jazzy student in 2014 graduating classes surveyed once, once per quarter for all four years. Got it. So once per quarter, so that's four times a year, uh, 16. So one, two, three. Yeah, so 16 times. So the data for each quarter of the survey, number of students with part-time jobs. So it seems like each quarter it's going up, 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 up. Okay. During which of the following periods is the increase the largest? All right. Let's take a look. This should be fairly easy to identify. Four through six. It looks like it doesn't go up that much. Maybe it goes up by five. Seven through 10. That's going to be the winner, right? Look at that. That's a big jump. We're going up almost uh, 20 something. So that's probably the winner. Let's look at 11 through 14, barely at all, right? You see it doesn't go up much. And 13 through 16, again, that's out. Number two, Eli saves money each month to buy a new computer. The total money saved T can be modeled by this equation. T equals 83 plus 30M, where M is the number of months since he has started saving. What does the number 83 represent? 83 is my y-intercept, right? For a linear equation, it's my starting value. It means he started with $83. <clears throat> Boom, done. The number of months he's been saving... Yeah, that's it. All right, number three. According to the Department of Agriculture, consuming 100 milligrams of bananas provides 0.15 milligrams of zinc. This is going to be a proportion. So grams of bananas, milligrams of zinc. We get 100 here to 0.15 zinc. We're just finding close to the number of milligrams of zinc provided by 140 grams of bananas. X cross cross. 100x equals 0.15 times 140. Could maybe do that in my head, but let's just be safe. Divided by, oops. Isolate by dividing by 100. Divide by, oops, divide by 100. 21 divided by 100 is, of course, 0.21. Boom, done. Let's make sure that makes sense, right? 5.21. We got another fifth. Is 0.3.3. Yeah, it's right. When the equation... This, where P is a constant, is graphed in the XY plane. The line passes through the point negative 2, 1. Got it. What is the value of P, a.k.a. plug and chug, right? We got a nice coordinate. We got an equation. Plug it in. Negative 2 in for X. 1 in for Y, of course, equals this. And then we solve for P. 
That's negative 10 plus P equals one, add 10 to both sides, 11 equals P, right? That cancels that out, P equals 11, boom, done. Now we'll plug it in. The original equation would be Y equals five X plus, oops, five X plus 11. <clears throat> so if I plugged in a negative two here, negative two times what is negative 10 plus 11 is one, it works, boom, done. Let's go to number five. Five and six refer to the following information, number of hits and times at bat by players on a Major League Baseball team. The scatter plot above shows the number of hits and the number of times at bat by each of the 20 players on a Major League Baseball team. The line of best fit for the data is also shown. Got it. The line of, okay, great. Which of the following statements about the relationship between the number of times at bat and the number of hits is true? Okay, as the number of times at bat increases, the number of hits decreases. No. As the number of time, I mean, this is logic, right? As the number of times that bat increases, the number of hits are going to increase, right? So this is wrong. As the number of times that bat increases, the number of hits increase. That's true. As the number of bat times that bat increases, the number of hits. It's constant. No, because that would be like a flat line like this. As the number of bats decreases, the number of hits increases. No. Uh, number six, for the player with 450 times at bat, the actual number of hits, for the player with 450 times at bat, the actual number of hits the player had is approximately how many fewer than the number of hits predicted. So first of all, where's 450? Let's do a little line like this so you can see. All right. And here is the person that hit it at 450. And it's approximately how many fewer, hold on, than predicted. It's approximately how many fewer than predicted. Okay, let's see. So this is maybe 112, maybe 113. And it's predicting maybe 120. It's maybe 10 times less. Yeah, 10 times less. Okay, it's approximate. Because 20 would be too much, right? 20 is like almost this whole distance. And that looks like a lot smaller. So 10 is the closest. All right, number seven. An advertisement states that the printing rate of a certain printer is 400 characters per second. Maybe it's 400 characters per one second. According to the convention that one word consists five characters, what would be the advertised printing rate in words per minute? So first, we're going to go to, we're going to do a little, um, you know, conversion here. So we let's do first characters per minute. So I multiply this by seconds and minutes. We're converting from seconds to minutes, a little dimensional analysis. So this is 60 seconds, one minute, cancel, cancel. Then we need to convert the characters, wait a minute, characters to words. So we'd say words, characters, one word is five characters, cancel, cancel. Now we've got words per minute, multiply, um, multiply all this stuff. So I get 400 times six, okay, so that's, Two four zero zero zero, right? Twenty four twenty four thousand divided by five. We can use my mental math to divide by five, right? You take you divide by ten and double it. So that's twenty four hundred doubled is forty eight hundred. Boom, done. And does that make sense? Twenty four thousand. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, eight. Year zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, the table above shows the yearly salary of an employee at a company. So it looks like as he's there longer, which makes sense. Goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up. Right. Which of the following best describes the type of model that fits the data in the table? All right. So let's see. It's probably linear, but let's see. It, if it's linear, this it has to go up by the same amount every year. Here it's going up by 1140. Oops. Here it's going up by... No, it's not linear. Uh, okay. I can figure it out for sure like this. Watch. Three nine one four zero divided by three eight zero zero zero. So it's going up by three percent. That's my guess. <clears throat> and let's just pick a random number. So one point oh three times four one. Actually, that makes sense. It's not linear. That's <laughs> yeah, not. It's usually is percentage based. And it gets. Yep. It's exponential. It's exponential by three percent every year. Yeah. Definitely not nine percent. That's. That'd be a big jump because even 9% is like close to 10%. If that were the case, then this should be like 45,000, right? Another four grand almost. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Okay. 
Numero nine, which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Let's distribute the negative, right? We got to distribute the negative and then combine like terms. I'm going to leave this term alone and we would just remove the parentheses. This one becomes X squared. Actually, let's rewrite both. I'm going to rewrite this one on top. Minus three Y squared just without the parentheses. And then this one on the bottom is positive X squared Y negative three X Y squared. And then positive, oh, I should flip it, but that's okay. Mm, positive 3y squared. These cancel. These add and these add. So this becomes 2x squared y plus, these are the same, plus 2xy squared. 2x squared y. It's this guy. Let's just make sure that's pretty obvious, right? It's, we got to have this term in front. Like, that's obvious because that... So this removes this one. This doesn't even make any sense. Why would you don't add the X one? I was kind of trying to trick you there. Um, and then we can dismiss this guy because when you distribute this negative, that's going to be negative and positive. It makes two, not eight. And then I don't know what the, this doesn't even make any sense. These should cancel out. So C is completely wrong. Numero 10, which of the following describes us. So, so you notice even when I'm pretty sure I go, th uh, I've got the right answer. Now, when I have the time and I know I've got, I know I'm probably going to be in pretty good shape time wise. I still look at the other choices. If you're crunched for time, fine, get the answer, select it if you know it and move on. But I like to say, you know, once you get enough practice, you'll, the time's going to be okay, usually. And then you can do stuff like that to be extra cautious, extra certain you don't make a silly mistake, which of the following describes a solution to the equation above. All right. What am I going to do? I'm going to, what's the easiest way to do this? Let me think for a second. Mm, I can't, I'm just going to distribute. So then I get seven halves X minus 49 equals four X minus one half X minus seven. Then I'm going to multiply everything by two to get rid of those fractions. So I get eight X minus X minus 14 equals 7x minus 98. That becomes 8x minus x is 7x minus 14 equals x. This is impossible because I got 7x and 7x cancels out. Negative 14 does not equal negative 98, obviously. So no solutions. And let me just make sure if I can double check this fast. Um, this becomes 7 halves x. Uh, and then that becomes seven halves X. Yeah, because this is also eight over two that, so seven half X minus seven, seven half X minus 49. That's the other way to look at it. Yeah, it's out, out for sure. All right, numero 11, the table below shows the monthly electricity bill of Joseph and Samuel for the first five months of a year. So Joseph, Samuel, Joseph, Samuel. So first Joseph is lower, then he goes higher, then he's lower, lower, and then lower. Which of the statements is true about the ranges and me? Oh, ooh, 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 ranges and medians. So this is here. Lowest, highest, and then here for Joseph, this is the lowest, and this is the highest. So without doing any serious math, I can tell that this is probably a range of around forty. This is a range of around forty-eight. Right, so Joseph has a higher range. Yeah, let me write it out. Let's say approximately 48 range equals 40. I'm just, this is approximate, right? So, so Joseph, no, both the range and median of Joseph's bills are greater, maybe. The range of Joseph's is less. No. Okay. Now let's talk about the median. So I'm going to number these guys. So I got lowest, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the median of Samuel. Then here I've got one, right? The median is the middle value. One, two, three, four, five. And five. So this is the median here for Joseph. So the median of Joseph is less. Both the range and median. Nope. Out. And then the range of Joseph is greater while the median of Joseph's is less than Samuel. Let's just double check one more time. One, two, three. Yep. One, two, three. Yep. 
D is the winner. Boom, done. Come on. Cars in service on a railroad. The table above represents information about 810 train cars in service on a railroad. Approximately what percentage? Okay. So we got in service less than 10 years. Single level, we got a bunch, 215. In service 10 or more years, even more. In service less than 10 years, double-decker, 16. In service 10 or more years, so a lot of old double-deckers. Um, approximately what percentage of the train cars in service are double-decker cars? Are double okay. Okay, first of all, 810 is the total. What percentage of the train cars in service are double-deckers that have been in service? Double deckers that have been in service less than 10 years. It's probably 2%, but it's 16 out of 810. We just divide times 100, if you want, and it's 1.9%, a.k.a. 2%. Just make sure I got the limitations right. Approximately what percentage of the train cars in service, these are all in service, are double deckers less than 10 years in service or less than 10 years. So it's that cross section. Boom, done. Numero 13, a moving company uses plastic wrap to bundle groups of boxes together. If a portion of plastic wrap that measures 900 inches, plastic wrap that measures 900 inches in length is used to bundle each group of boxes. How many groups of boxes can be bundled using 1500 feet? Okay, so we'll do a little proportion. Doot, doot, inches. Um, okay, num boxes, I don't know, B. So 900 inches is used to bundle one box, right? The proportion of plastic wrap then is used to bundle each group, I mean. So then we'd have X bundles or boxes or whatever. Yeah, maybe that's bundles, we'll say. Um, is But we can't put 1,500 because it's 1,500 feet. So that's 1,500, and then we must also be in inches, so multiply times 12, right? And we got 18,000. And then we can cross-cross 900x equals 18,000. Divide by 900. Zero's gone. Zero's gone. 180 divided by 9 is like 18 divided by 9 is 2 times 10 is 20. If I put 1,500, it wouldn't have even made sense. Like, this isn't that hard of a question because they didn't even put the answer if you were to use 1,500 feet. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty much leading you to make the conversion. And, and uh, we'll watch. Let's see if I over, overlook something I got this wrong. But I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's right, right? And then 12 times. Let me just do it again in my head. 12 times 15 is 180, and then 180, 18,000, yeah, 18,000, reach group box, how many groups of box can be bundled, yeah, okay, 14, the table below, now the, the difficulty should start to ramp up even more, the table below shows the number of calories in a cheeseburger at six different restaurants, great, Blue Jay, Clear Lake, boom, boom, Riverside, that's the big dog, the most calorie one, what is the difference in the number of calories in a cheeseburger at Riverside? And the median number of calories in cheeseburgers at all six restaurants. So it's 1120 minus whatever the median is. Now let's get the median. So we'll rank them from lowest to greatest. And watch, I'm not going to rewrite them. I'm going to save time. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So the median, now we have an even number. The median is going to fall exactly between the two middle values 810 and 900. What's in between those? I believe it's 855. But we're going to double check anyways. I'm going to show you how I got that. I'm going to average them. Eight, 800 plus 810 plus 900 divided by 2 is 855. And they want the difference. Two sixty-five. Boom. Done. Let me just make sure that's right. Two hundred. Yep. It is correct. Numero five oh. Let's see. A circle is graphed in the xy plane. The circle has a radius of three, aka we need a nine on this side. By the way, know that circle formula. It's radius squared on this side, and the center of the circle is four negative two. It should be x minus four 
Oh, we don't have a minus in circles. Uh uh, that's out. It's this guy. And then y plus two, because it's y, you know, y minus negative two. Um, that's it. A high school, okay, so 16 through 18. This is going to be a long one, so we really got to make sure we understand it. A high school developed program called Propel, which offers extra guidance and support during the ninth grade year before the school year began. Oh, sorry, ninth grade year. Before the school year began, 327 rising ninth graders were selected random to participate in a study. 109 of those students were randomly assigned to enroll in Propel. So 109. And the remaining students served as the control group. Got it. A summary of the year year end grade point averages for the 327 ninth graders below. Okay, so the ones that enrolled in Propel, so we got 61 out of the 109, right? This is a total of 109, and this would be 327. I'm just going to write it down. 327 minus 109 is 218. And if you add these, you'll see it does add up to 218, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So... So in, in the Propel people, more than half had above a 3.0. In the not enrolled Propel, less than half, basically. It looks like Propel helped maybe GPA-wise is, I think, what this is implying. Maybe. Okay, if a sixth grade st student at the high school is chosen at random, which of the following is closest to the probability that the student will have a GPA of three or greater? So all we're doing is we're looking at this out of the total because it's not about Propel or not Propel. It's just, hey... Chosen at random, what's the probability they'll have 3.0 or greater? So 61 plus 95 equals that, divided by the total, which is 327. So look how careful we have to be to make sure we didn't type something in wrong, right? 156, again, I'm going to double check, yes. Divided by 327, yes. I underline that. And that's 0.477, a.k.a. 0.48 if we round up. All right. Number 17, what is the difference to the nearest whole percent between the percentage of students enrolled in Propel who had a GPA or greater and the percentage of students not enrolled in Propel. Who, okay, so let's subtract those two percentages. So it's good that I wrote down these totals, right? Because that's going to help me. So the people, so it's 3 per one or greater. So it's 61 out of 109. Minus 95 out of 218, right? Because that's the people that had, you see in the graph, that's the people that had 3.0 GPA or greater percentage of those guys who got it minus the percentage of those guys who got it. And I'm not going to round yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the math, then I'm going to round. 61 divided. So again, watch the calculator. Make sure you don't make any mistakes here. It's that minus, I'm going to put my parentheses, 95 divided by 218. Which is so 12%. So 12%. Now we're going to analyze it and make sure that makes sense, right? This is definitely more than half. 61 out of 109, it's like, let's say, 55%. Um, 95 out of 218 is like, hold on, 220, 95. So like 100 out of 220 is like, let's say 40, 45%. I don't know. So yeah, 55, 45, it's about 10%. And then we, to be more precise, we got 12%. So I think that's good. Greater than, or greater, and the percentage of students not enroll in Propel. Okay, I feel good. 18, of the students enrolled in Propel program, the ratio of boys to girls, this is for Propel, ratio of boys to girls is approximately two to three, which is fine is the best estimate of the number of girls enrolled in the program. Got it. So we could say 2x, 3x, right? And then we could do a little equation. 2x plus 3x. This is in the ratio, and we don't know what it's multiplying by, right? But that's any ratio. If it's a two to three ratio, that means this could be represented as 2x, some common multiplier in that 3x. So we want the number of girls, aka 3x. 2x plus 3x equals 109. That's the total enrolled in the Propel program. Equals 109, divide by 5, divide by 5. X equals 10.9, double it is 21.8, right? And then to the number of girls is 21.8 times 3. 
which is 65.4. And that makes sense because, wait a minute, ratio of boys to girls is 2 to 3. There should be more girls than boys. And if there's 109, 65, that's more girls than boys, right? That one doesn't make any sense. And then if, I'm, if I double this, let's just double check our math, 42, 43.6. 43.6 boys. That's a 2 to 3 ratio. And if I add these together, I get 109. So pretty confident there. Moving on to 19. In our, I don't even know where the uh, multiple choice ends on the PSAT, so we'll just keep going until we're done. An artist is creating a sculpture using bendable metal rods of equal length. One rod is formed into the shape of a square, and another rod is formed into the shape of an equilateral triangle. Great. And they're equal length, right? Okay. Of an ego. If each side of the triangle is two inches longer than the square, like this, two inches longer than each side of the square, how long in inches is each rod? Got it. So my equation is going to be 4x equals, that's the perimeter of this, equals this plus this plus this, which is 3x plus 6. Subtract 3x from both sides, x equals 6. Okay, how long in inches is each rod? 6 inches. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. An entire rod would be 24 because it's the whole thing, not each side of the square. Uh, now we'll double check, right? If I took a square, it would be 24. It would be 6 by 6 by 6 by 6. Cool. If I made it into a triangle, it would be 3 sides. It would be 8 by 8 by 8. Those are two more. We know we did it, right? Boom, done. Number 20. Rational functions defined above. Which of the following is an equivalent form that displays values not included in the domain? Which of the following is an equivalent form that displays values not included in the domain as constant? Okay, they're basically saying we want to see the restrictions. It's going to be this guy. But, or actually it may not be. It may not be. I may be jumping to a conclusion because we might be able to um, cross-cancel. So let's, let's factor on the top. Let's factor on the bottom x squared plus x minus 2. Let's keep factoring. 2 times x. So far, our b is looking good. This can factor as well to x plus 2, x minus 1, because that 2 and negative 1 multiply to negative 2, add to positive 1, and nothing cancels out, and that's good. And this is what we want, right? We are displaying the values not, not include the domain. It's negative 2 and positive 1 or whatever, right? So we're good to go. That's all they wanted, just factor. <laughs> when in doubt, what I, like I've said many times, when in doubt, if you don't have like, what are they talking about? Just factor. A landscaper is designing a rectangular fountain um, with a four foot wide path around it. Four feet. Four feet, et cetera, et cetera. The equation A equals 4P plus 64 will relate to the area A in square feet in square feet of the path to the perimeter P in feet of the fountain. Got it. Got it. Okay. So whatever the perimeter is, times 4 plus 64 gives me the area of this. In the design, how many feet will the perimeter of the fountain be? Increase. How many feet will the perimeter of the fountain increase for each additional square foot of the path's area? Okay. I'm going to have to make a table. Okay. So, wait a minute. This might be really easy. In the design, how many feet will the perimeter increase for each additional square foot of the oh actually this is really easy it's one fourth because all i have to do then is if i just rewrote this equation as p equals um sorry if i subtract 64 let's say 4p equals a minus 64 and then divide by 4 it would be p equals one fourth a minus it, this doesn't matter but it would be 16 okay then it's like the slope of this equation with p isolated is one fourth and remember the slope is like 
uh, this go the perimeter goes up by one if the area goes up by four, right? It's what change in y over x. So and then let me make sure I read it right. Right. Okay. In the design, how many feet will the perimeter of the fountain increase for each additional square foot? Oh no 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 no. Hold on hold on hold on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's four. It's four. Never mind. It's four. For each additional square. F no, it's one fourth. Oh my god. I keep going back and forth. It's one fourth. Okay. Now I can make a table. Now I can prove it to you. All right. So check this out. So when a equals zero, um, well the perimeter is negative sixteen. That but that that doesn't that doesn't hold water. Okay. Let's say when a equals sixty four. No. When a equals sixty. Eight, okay. When a equals sixty-eight, one fourth of that is seventeen minus one is the perimeter is one. Yeah, I don't even know how that makes sense, but whatever. Then when a equals um, sixty-nine, right? Because now we're going up. So, how many feet will the perimeter increase for each additional square foot of the path's area? Now I go sixty-nine. What's one fourth of sixty-nine? It's seventeen and a quarter. Seventeen and a quarter minus that is one and a quarter. So as this has gone up by one, this has gone up by one fourth, if that makes sense. So it's a little tricky. Again, we can get to this point and recognize that um, for, yeah, sorry, I, the slope is one to four, but it's really like it's one fourth, right? So th this means that as the perimeter goes up by one, the area goes up by, by four. So if the perimeter goes up by, if the area goes up by one, perimeter goes up by one fourth. It's basically just that. Okay, that was a long one. We gotta we gotta hustle. Make sure I got enough time to finish this thing. In the x y plane, the graph of the function q is a parabola. The graph intersects the x axis at negative one zero and r zero. I assume r is here. I don't know. If the vertex of q occurs at the point two four, which is in the middle, two ooh two four. So let's say this is two. What is the value of R? Guess what? Vertex is right in the middle of the X intercepts. So if that's th a distance of three, it's gonna be a distance of three to get to R, so it's at five. Just make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And then negative one, zero. And the vertex is at two, and then this is at five. Boom, done. Okay, next, 23. Liquid going through a cooling system is chilled so that its temperature decreases at a constant rate from 100 to 25 in five seconds. So in five seconds, it, it drops 15. You see what I'm saying? 15 centigrade down each, I mean, sorry, one second, it drops 15. Two seconds, it drops 35, it drops 75. Uh, which of the following functions represents the temperature C as a function of time in seconds after chilling began from zero to T? Okay. so. C is going to equal, it's going to have 100. And then I said 15 per second. It's literally this. It's 15T. Because it's, every second it's dropping by 15, as we already said. I don't, this seems too easy for 23. Hold on. Uh, decreases at a constant rate from 100 to 25. 100 to 25. And then at 5 seconds, it's at 25. I think it's right, but which is five represents the temperature. It's got to be right. I'm just like it seemed way too out of place, way too easy. The formula for the volume of a sphere with radius r is shown above. Got it. The radius of the planet Jupiter is about eleven times the radius of planet Earth. Radius of Earth equals x. Radius of Jupiter equals eleven x. As a, about how many times larger is the volume of Jupiter than the volume of Earth? All you got to do is cube 11. That's it, because this would go in as x cubed, whatever. This would go in as 11x cubed, right? So 11 to the third power equals that. So it's 1331 times that. And the four-thirds pi are negligible because both of them are being multiplied by four-thirds pi, so it doesn't matter. 
Okay, oh my god, we still got a lot of multiple choice. Uh, the population of squirrels in a park has been doubling every 15 years. Which of the following? So zero is, let's say, one. 15 is two. 30 is four, like that. The statement that describes the type of function that best models the relationship in the population of squirrels in the park in the number of 15 year periods is exponential. Goodbye, linear. Goodbye, linear. Exponential growth because population squirrels are increasing by the same. No, because the population squirrels increasing by the same percentage, which is AKA 100%, right? It's doubling. 26. If the function is defined by f of x equals this, what is f of x minus 4? So. What we're doing is we're now plugging in x minus 4 into every x value. So it's x minus 4 squared minus 5 times x minus 4 plus 4. Let's simplify. This foiled out becomes x squared minus 8x plus 16. Why? Because it's x minus 4 times x minus 4. You write it out, foil it, and you'll get that. Distribute the 5, negative 5, negative 5x plus 20 plus 4. So, uh, and then let's foil, uh, distribute this. We got 3x squared minus 24x plus 48 minus 5x plus 24. So we got 60, 72, negative 29x and 3x squared. 3x squared minus 29x. 3x squared minus 29x plus 72. Let's make sure that's right. 48, 48, 68, 72. Negative 24, negative 5x. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Oh, boy. We got to hustle. 27. And I think we're on free response after this. The equation of the two lines are shown above. If the lines are graphed in the xy plane, which of the following ordered pairs represents a point at which they intersect? System of equations. Multiply the top one by 3. Because I don't uh, Actually, wait. We can just substitute. 154 minus 4y equals, I'm going to plug one third y in for x, 10 thirds y. Multiply everything by 3. 3 times that is 462, right? 450 plus 12 minus 12y equals 10y. 462 equals 22y, right? Add 12y to both sides, divide by 22, divide by 22. I'm guessing it's 21 maybe? I don't know. All right, let's divide it. And it is 721. Now we're going to plug it in to make sure. 7 is x, 21. That works. 7 is x. That's 70 equals 154 minus 21 times that is 84. And that also gives me 70. Boom, done. All right. Ver double verified. We are good to go. 28. We're on to the free response. I think there's four problems up. I'm not sure. A grocer carries two types of frozen pizza meals. that have the fat and carbohydrate. Uh, content shown in the table. John wants to purchase a combination of two types of meals with no more than 350 grams of fat and no more than 2975 of carbohydrates. If John purchases 10 Szechuan chicken meals, what is the greatest number of stir fry meals he can receive? The combination will satisfy the requirement. So we're at, for fat, he's at 50. For carbs, he's at 350. And we want to max out at 350 here. And we want to max out at 2975 here, right? What is the number of stir fry meals he can purchase? So then, so for example, I can get another 300 grams in here. is 75. So I could purchase, so by this metric for the Szechuan, for the fat, I'm putting now, now this is the number that I have and this is the amount that I can get. Um, this would be 2625 that I can get up to. So to get up to 300, I can purchase 75 Szechuan chickens. So again, these are these are different, right? This is the number, this is the amount of fat we have here. That's not what I'm talking about here. This is actually like the answer. It's either gonna be 75 or what I put here. It's gonna be the smaller of the two, right? Because I can't go over the carbohydrates or the fat. 
And then to get the fat, I can get up to 2625 divided by 35 per, right? Oh, no, sorry, divided by 40. Actually, let's do the whole thing. 2975 minus 350 minus 350, right? Divided by 40, 65.6, so I have to round down to 65. Don't round up. So guess what? I can only get 65 because if I get more than that, I'll go beyond the carbohydrate limit. All right, 29. Oh boy. Exercise solution system created above. What's one possible value of the problem? Oh my God, product, I gotta, I'm running real low on time here. What's one possible value of the product of X and Y? So let's solve. Okay, so I'm gonna substitute. X minus one equals, and then I'm gonna immediately, no, I can't factor yet. Sorry, X squared minus four X plus three. X squared minus 5X, add one to the side, plus four. Uh, X, X, so it's minus one, minus four, right? That multiplies the positive four, adds to negative five, and my solutions are one and four, but then the coordinates are, if I plug in one, it's zero. If I plug in four, it's three, so it's 12, and make sure that works, four, 16, Minus 16, there's three, yeah, so 12 is the answer. All right, moving on. 30 and 31, and I think we're done after this. Okay, we can do it. Question 30 and 30 refer to the following information. The graph above shows a supply in millions of pounds of king crab harvested and sold from 2005 to 2011. Great, so it's 165, something 180, boom, and then it's on the decline. The information for the year 2012 is not included in the graph. In 2006, the price of king crab was $8 per pound. Let's put it on the graph. And at the beginning of the year and dropped to seven at the end of the year. So $8 and then drop to seven. If 60% of the king crab supply was sold at the higher price per pound and the rest was sold at the lower price, What was the total revenue generated in millions from the sales in 2006? Got it. So we had 180, and I don't have to say, this is pounds and millions, right? Um, so I don't think I need to worry about the, the millions. I think I can just leave it as 180 as opposed to 180 million, right? So 60% of this, 0.6 times 180, I think it's 108, right? 108 were sold at $8, and the remaining, which would be 72, were sold at $7. And if we add this up, so it's that times 8 plus 72 times 7 is 1368, and I believe that's the winner. Don't have a lot of time to double check this, but total revenue generated. So it's 1368, so really 1 billion. It's crazy, but I guess that makes sense, right? If you're selling at $8 a pound and you get 180, mil, uh, 180 million pounds, right? I guess that makes sense. In 2011, the price of king crab was 17 per pound. Wow, price has gone up. In 2012, X million pounds of crab were sold at 16 per pound. So we'll say X million, I don't know. There's X. Let's assume it's declining. If the total money generated from sales each year were the same, what's the value of X? All right, we can do this, no problem. We got a limited amount of time, but this is doable. So check it out. It's set, oh, X is gonna be bigger, by the way. Let's just make it accurate. Because if it's the same, right, they must have sold more if it's a cheaper price. So we'd have 17 times, I think that's 80, right? Yeah, okay. So 17 times 80 equals 16 times X. 1360 equals 16 X, divide both sides by 16. Let's hope it's a whole number. Oh yeah, that makes me feel confident. 
X million and two thousand twelve X million pounds of crab were sold sixteen dollars. The total money generated from sales each year was the same. So eighty five. So they did sell more, as we predicted, as makes sense. Okay. This PSAT is no joke. We're gonna stop the clock and go ahead and check the answers, and then we'll do my best to take some take some questions here. All right. Let's take a look. All right, number one is B A B D. B A B D. Number two, five is, oh, sorry, B A B C. B A B C. Number nine is A D D A. A D D A. Number thirteen is B C C B. Seventeen is D B C B. D B C B. Twenty one is B D D C. So far, so good. All right, 25 is B, D, D, B, D, D. Where, what was that weird one that I was like, this is too easy, and I, I guess we got it right. Was it 23? Yeah, this one was so weird. Okay. Now we go to the free response, the moment of truth, 65. Yes. Oh, 0 or 12. So you get to add either one, right? Because 0 times 1 is 0. That's great. 1368. And last but not least, 85. We got them. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let's see what we got here. Thank you guys for all the likes. I appreciate that. And if you did like this video, please click that like button. It would be much appreciated. Um, could you go over number? Okay. Let me, let me go scroll back up here and see what people said. I don't know what the fees are. Usually, I thought it's just free because they do it at your school. Um, SAT tomorrow, no solution. How? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Amelia. Could you go? Oh, number seven. Okay, sure. All right, numero seven. Oh, let's see. Oh, this one? Yeah, sure. This is what's called dimensional analysis. I have a cool video on this. If you if you search uh, for my videos and go to the camp method, it's actually it actually lays it out pretty carefully how to do this. So, I first set it up at, with the rate, the unit rate as 400 characters per 1 second. And then I know I got to turn it instead of second, it's got to be minutes and words per minute. So, this helps me get out of the seconds it because i say 60 seconds to one minute the seconds cancel now i'm 400 characters per minute right then i need to get rid of the characters so i set this proportion up over here with characters on the bottom and words on the top and then just make an equivalency right one word is five characters cancel out the character unit and we're good to go then you multiply across and you get it Check that one out. Check out the camp method. Oh, got some more likes. Thank you guys so much. Uh, so much appreciation for all of you. Okay, listen, I'm going to have to wrap it up and call it a day. And I want to say thank you again for everybody joining. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this valuable. And if you did want to subscribe and you did like what you see, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That is it for me. Thank you guys so much. And best of luck to everybody during all these crazy times. I know you can stay focused and strong and rock out this test if you do have it tomorrow or later this week. Best of luck. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.